Good morning, Saints. It is Saturday, September 22nd, uh, three something in the morning. It's interesting, the 22nd, amazing how the Holy Spirit works, but this is a word that the Lord has been releasing to me for some time now, and that I keep getting resistance from from the spirit of Antichrist continually coming against me in this. I am brought into a place of liberty and then into a place of despair of laying hold of this revelation that the Holy Spirit continually brings to me and then I am brought into a sense of deception by the spirit of Antichrist and this is this battle that is going on in the mind and which must be overcome to enter into his rest. And so I'm going to release this today, not only for you, but for me. Um, because as I say, the enemy, um, this iniquity in me, the spirit of antichrist is continually coming against this truth. the simplicity of it. And so I'm going to title this today The Darkness is Past and the True Light Now Shineth. And that is out of 1 John chapter 2 verse 8. Let me look at that to make sure that's the right verse. The darkness is past and the true light now shineth. I'm going to open here in prayer. Father, I thank you for your great goodness, which you have laid up for those that fear you, which you have wrought for those that trust in you before the sons of men. Thou shalt hide them in the secret of your face from the pride of man. Thou shalt keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. Jesus, I thank you for sending the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, that would bring us into all truth into the greatness of the Father's love and of your love for us. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that your truth overcomes the lie of this world. And that you reveal unto us the deep things, the deep things of God. For the natural man this carnal mind receiveth not the things of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he receive them. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Holy Spirit, we thank you for discerning these things for us, for quickening our hearts and minds to receive them. For we have received your Spirit that we may know the things that have been freely given to us by God. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Jesus and Holy Spirit, for those things which have been freely given to us. That we may live from the river of grace. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to go ahead and open in, in 1 John. Uh, I'm going to recite through the first chapter into chapter 2 up till verse, I don't know, maybe 9 or 10. So, an amazing section of Scripture which the Holy Spirit continually brings me back to into an understanding that I have not had 
up until recently. Um, and so just allow the word to fall upon your heart and allow the Holy Spirit to teach us today the simplicity of walking in the light of the Father's face. That which was from the beginning, which we have seen, which we have heard, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen, and we have heard, and we bear witness unto you the life which was with the Father, the eternal life which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that you may also have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. These things we have written unto you, that your joy might be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you, that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as, we, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ his son cleanses us from all sin if we say we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us but if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness if we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, these things I write unto you that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, who is the propitiation for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the whole world. He who says he knows him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby we know that we are in him. He who says he abides in him ought himself so to walk even as he walked. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment. The old commandment is the word which we heard from him from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I give unto you, which thing is true in him and in you because the darkness is past and the true light now shineth. He who says he walks in the light and hates his brother is in darkness unto now. But whoso loveth his brother What verse is this? Uh, verse 10. 1 John chapter 2, verse 10. He that loveth his brother abides in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hates his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whither he goeth, because that darkness has blinded his eyes. 
and I'll, uh, I'll kind of stop there. So 1 John chapter 2, verse 8. He says, For the darkness is past, and the true light now shineth. What is that darkness that is past, and the true light that now shineth? It is a darkness that is in our hearts, that is in the hearts of all a fallen humanity. And of course, Luke chapter 1 speaks of this darkness where Zechariah is prophesying over his son, John the Baptist. And he says, Thou child shall be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people through the remission of sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring on high has visited us to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace, the way of his steps. This light is the light of the Father's face. The revelation that you are accepted in the beloved. And so for a moment I'm going to speak about the goodness of God. Um, something that the Holy Spirit has been bringing me into for a couple years to fully apprehend what David was pursuing in Psalm 27 where he said, I believed to see the goodness of the Lord and the land of the living. And now after these weeks of what I've been battling, I can more appreciate what he was trying to apprehend and lay hold of, this goodness. This goodness is the light of the Father's face. And the light of the Father's face is this goodness, this love, which is coming from him that is telling us we are accepted in the beloved. We are accepted in his son. If by faith we will come and hide ourselves in the son, we are accepted before the father. That is the father's goodness to abide in this fellowship with him by abiding in the mercy of Christ. We cannot come by our own works. We are never accepted by our own works. We are not accepted by walking just as Christ walked. We are accepted in the blood of his son. And that is the only thing that makes us acceptable before the Father. It is to come under the Father's hand of mercy to humble ourselves and in this humbling, there is a repentance that I cannot come in my own strength. I cannot come by my own works. I can only, I must humble myself out of that pride of religion. And by faith alone. Can I walk before the Lord, before the Father in the land of the living, in the light of his face, 
in this acceptance, knowing that I'm accepted not by my performance, not by anything that I have done. but in Christ alone. And the spirit of Antichrist will continually come against that revelation and will say you need to do something. You need to, if you were accepted, you would be walking just as Christ walked. You must walk just as Christ walked to truly be accepted before the Father. But no, See, this is what John the Revelator speaks of in 1 John chapter 5, verse 19. That the whole world lies in wickedness together until now. Now, that is that lie of the spirit of Antichrist. That you must bring something other than Christ to the Father. That you must do something that you must perform something. When we fully apprehend and lay hold of this and walk in it, we will walk just as Christ walked. But until we fully apprehend and lay hold of this, we will never be able to walk just as Christ walked. Because see, the river of grace flows to us and through us when we truly believe that we are accepted in the beloved. Nothing of ourselves, but only Christ. And we can we can apprehend this in our mind, but yet not in our heart and not live out of it. We can confess it and speak it and still not live out of it. And this is what David was pressing into, that he would apprehend this great truth, that he was accepted in the beloved, that he was accepted in the Mashiach, the Messiah, through his blood that he would walk in the goodness of the Lord, in that fellowship with the Father. This is his goodness. This is the goodness of God that leads men to repentance, that we are accepted in his Son. If by faith, we would enter into that. This is the rest that remains for the people of God. This is the rest that Psalm 95 speaks about. This is the rest that Hebrews 3 and 4 that Paul speaks of. There remains a rest to the people of God. Be diligent to enter into that rest. That means there is a resistance Be diligent or labor to enter into that rest. There's a resistance of this world coming against this. And we must enter into it by faith, it says. Lest we fall after the same example of unbelief. It's this rest in Christ. It's this rest of living from the river that flows from the throne, the river of his grace the power of his love. And so Psalm 95 says, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. See, the hardening of the heart comes from the iniquity, from the spirit of Antichrist. This iniquity is the spirit of Antichrist as Ezekiel 28 verse 14 says that Lucifer was perfect in all his ways until iniquity was found in him. And that iniquity is the spirit of Antichrist. 
And as David said in Psalm 51, that he was shapen in iniquity. And this is that spirit of the old man. That's, this is that spirit, this lying spirit of the world. It's 1 John 5, 19. The whole world lies, lies in wickedness. This is what David was speaking of in Psalm 116. Where David said, um, here he was again speaking of the goodness of the Lord. And David says, um, I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed, therefore I spoke. What's David saying? I will walk before the Lord, before Yahweh, before the Father, in the light of his face, in the land of the living. I will walk in this acceptance. I will apprehend all that must my Messiah paid for me. As David beheld the Lord on that cross, I will walk before the Lord, before the Father, before the Father's face in that acceptance in the land of the living. He's saying, David said, I will apprehend it while I am yet alive, not when I die and ascend, but on this earth I will walk in this acceptance and live from this grace. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed, therefore I spoke. There's, 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 a, there's a laying hold of this to apprehend it. I believe, therefore I spoke. I was greatly afflicted, I said in my haste. All men are liars. This is what John is speaking of. The whole world lies in wickedness together until now. All men are liars. What, what is David saying? He's saying the whole world lies in wickedness against me, apprehending this truth that I am accepted in the beloved, that I will walk before the Lord, before the Father, in the light of his face. I was greatly afflicted. I said in my haste, all men are liars. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits towards me? I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of Yahweh. David is saying, I will the cup of salvation which Isaiah speaks of, with joy shall I draw waters from the wells of salvation. What are those waters? The river of grace. Through the drinking of his blood, by entering into his mercy, I can drink of those waters of grace because I know I am accepted in the beloved. What shall I render unto Lord for all his benefits unto me? I will take the cup and drink of his grace. This is what he wants us to enter into this rest. This rest, of course, is what Jesus was calling when he said, Come unto me, all who are weary and heavy laden, come unto me. This is that voice. Today, if you will hear his voice, Come unto me where you are accepted in the Father. Nothing but you. Are you not weary and heavy laden by trying to somehow step into to, to walk just as he walked? 
Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. For my yoke is easy, the King James says, but it's the Greek word krestos. My yoke is goodness and my burden is light. What is this yoke of goodness? It is walking in the light of the Father's face. It's accepted. It's accepted in the Father. And will you truly allow this yoke to come upon you, to walk with the Lord in this acceptance, to walk in the Father's house, in this total acceptance in Him? Nothing that you do, only joining yourself with Christ. This is walking in the eternal paths of mercy and truth. This is Jeremiah. Six sixteen. Stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the ancient or the eternal paths wherein is the good way and walk therein and you shall find rest for your souls. This rest for our souls. Of course Jesus says take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Come unto me, all who are weary and heavy laden, I will give you rest. This is the rest for our souls. Take your yoke, my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. You will live from the river of grace, is what he is saying. For my yoke is goodness. It's this acceptance. It's walking. It's living in the Father's house in the light of his face. These are the eternal paths. These eternal paths, as David speaks of in Psalm chapter 25, verse 10, all the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth. See, this is abiding in his mercy by faith. Okay, let's go to, there's so much to bring forth here. Um, Holy Spirit, I thank you for simplicity. I rebuke the spirit of Antichrist, which would come against the simplicity of your truth. I thank you for your law being written upon our hearts, the law of liberty. Second Corinthians chapter three, verse 18, where Paul says, but we all with unveiled face beholding it as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord, are being transfigured from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of truth that is bringing us into all truth. But we all with unveiled face, just prior to that, Paul is speaking of Israel that could not see Christ, that could not see the acceptance in Christ, that did not enter into that rest. In the reading of the Old Testament, they could not see that Christ had paid and was going to pay that price, that they could walk in that acceptance. 
but we all with unveiled face. See, this is the veil of shame coming off. There are two veils. I've spoken about this many times over the years. The Holy Spirit revealed this to me many years ago, but the two veils are shame and reproach that the enemy places over us to not come into this acceptance, to not come into the fullness of the salvation through the, through the Yeshua. But in the blood of Christ, this veil of shame is removed if we will come in by faith and abide in this acceptance. We all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed, transfigured from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. And the next verse, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1 says, Seeing we have this ministry. What is this ministry he's speaking of? If you look in the context prior to that, um, it talks about the law being a ministry of condemnation but that we have a ministry of righteousness. What is the ministry of righteousness? Our righteousness is of Christ, right? The gates of righteousness that David speaks of in Psalm 118, open to me the gates of righteousness. That's talking about entering into Christ, entering into this acceptance in Christ. Open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go into them and praise the Lord. This gate of the Lord, that's Jesus. Jesus said, enter in through the narrow gate. I am the narrow gate. For narrow is the gate and afflicted is the way. See, this is this affliction. This is resistance from the spirit of Antichrist. There is an affliction in putting off this old man and putting off the old mind and renewing your mind. The Greek literally says, for narrow is the gate and afflicted is the way that leadeth unto life. And few, few there be that find it. Open to me, Psalm 118, the gates of righteousness. I will go into them and praise the Lord. This gate of the Lord into which the righteous enter. I will praise thee for thou hast heard me and art become my salvation, Yeshua. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief corner. It is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will be glad and rejoice in it. Save now, I beseech thee, O Lord. Hosanna. Hosanna. Save now, I beseech thee, O Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, send prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. God is the Lord who has shown us light. This is the light of his face shining upon us, saying, You are accepted in the beloved. God is the Lord who has shown us light. We will bless you out of the house of the Lord. See, this is coming into the house of the Father through this acceptance in Christ. The servant does not abide in the house forever. The son abides in the house forever. We will bless you out of the house of the Lord. Bind the sacrifice, this living sacrifice. Bind the sacrifice with cords unto the horns of the altar. This is the horns of the altar, the brazen altar, which are horns of mercy, which Adonijah and others laid hold upon the horns of that altar and cried out for mercy. Here we're binding ourselves to that mercy. Bind the sacrifice with cords unto the horns of the altar. Thou art my God, I will praise thee. Thou art my God, I will exalt thee. 
O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Jesus is this gate of righteousness. This is what Isaiah chapter 26 verse 2 says, Open ye the gates, these are the gates of righteousness, that the righteous nation which keepeth the faith may enter in, enter into this acceptance in Christ. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace. That's Jesus. Jesus is perfect peace. Jesus said to his disciples, My peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, give I unto you. This is this perfect peace of abiding in him in this acceptance with the Father. As the Aaronic priesthood would pray over Israel in Numbers chapter 6, verse, what's it, verse 23? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, this acceptance in Christ. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The grace flows out of this acceptance. When you fully apprehend this acceptance, not of anything you have done, but only what the Son has done. Then flows this river of grace. The Lord make his face shine upon you. That's the goodness. And be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his face upon you. And give you peace. This peace of knowing you are accepted in the beloved. You are accepted in Christ. Nothing that you have done. This is what David was laying hold of. To fully apprehend that he would walk before the Lord before the Father's face in the land of the living. I believed, therefore I spoke. And so that's where we're going to lead into here. This is what actually 2 Corinthians leads into, that revelation that David was pursuing. And so let's finish up um, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. Seeing we have received this ministry, the ministry of righteousness, to enter into this acceptance in Christ, where the veil of shame is removed, and we behold our true identity, we come accepted before the Father. No more shame. Seeing we have received this ministry, as we have received mercy, we have this ministry of righteousness because of the mercy, the shedding of Christ's blood. He came to perform the mercy, it says in Luke chapter 1, promised to our fathers. Seeing we have received this ministry as we have received mercy, we faint not. We faint not to believe, to hold fast in faith, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. That, that Greek word there for dishonesty, the hidden things, it's the word for shame. We have renounced the hidden things of shame. We've removed this veil by, by faith in this acceptance in Christ, where we walk before the Lord, before his face and his goodness in the land of living. having renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. You see, this is the spirit of Antichrist which twists the word and said, oh, see, no, you've got to walk just as Christ walked to be accepted. And this is how 1 John gets twisted. And I'll go there after a while, maybe. <laughs> 
Okay, we'll go there for a moment. So, in 1 John chapter 1, where John, by the Holy Spirit, says that Jesus says that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. See, the fellowship is in the acceptance and knowing you're accepted in Christ. It's not in the walking just as Christ walked. You cannot walk as Christ walked until you receive the acceptance. When you receive the acceptance of his goodness, the acceptance in Christ then flows to you this river of grace which allows you to walk just as he walked. This is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him this love. God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him, that we're yoked to Christ in this goodness, in this acceptance to walk with him in these eternal paths. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light of this acceptance, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood, the mercy, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. See, what this is saying is you can walk in the light of this acceptance and still sin. You don't have to be perfect to walk before the Father in the light of his face. That if you walk in this acceptance, you'll you'll be in this place of knowing that his blood covers you. You receive it, you repent, and you receive of that forgiveness, and you continue to walk. But to walk in darkness is to think, ah, I need to I fell. Now I'm now I'm no longer in that place. No. It wasn't anything that we did. And nothing that we do brings us to that place other than believing. David said, I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. But if we walk in that light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we go back to First John chapter 2 verse 8 where it says the darkness is past and the true light now shineth that darkness in our hearts that separates us from him that says oh we need to do this To become accepted. The true light now shining is we've received this light from the Father that has shone into our hearts. And that's what Second Corinthians is, is going to make incredibly clear to us. So back to <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 4. Seeing we have received this ministry, this ministry of righteousness, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced 
the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth. Who's the truth? Christ. See, if we walk in this acceptance, then we will manifest this truth. But by manifesting the truth, we'll commend ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. What are we commending to every man's conscience? What is the gospel? What is the good news of Christ that we are taking? You're accepted. Just believe and step into him. Receive of that blood. You are accepted from the Father. It is his great goodness that's leading you to repentance. You are accepted in the beloved. This is that gospel, the good news. Not only do we receive of the Father's mercy, we show mercy to others because we cannot, if we fully grasp this revelation, we cannot look on somebody with condemnation. Just as Jesus did not. The only those that were condemned were those that would not receive this revelation. The religious leaders that said, you have to do this to become accepted. And if we will not enter into that rest, if we will not enter into that acceptance through Christ, we are condemned already. But we, as we received mercy, we are to look upon the whole world in that mercy and show that mercy, the merciful ones who flowing through them, receiving this grace as they live in that mercy and flowing out of them this mercy, this, this, this river of grace flowing to the world that would draw all men to Jesus. Having renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel, this good news, is hid, it is hid to them who are lost, and who the God of this world, the spirit of Antichrist, has blinded the minds of them that believe not, that believe not that they're accepted through this simplicity through the foolishness of the cross who has blinded the minds of them that believe not lest lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God should shine on them you are accepted For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus our Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. Now listen to this next verse. Verse 6, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6. For the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts. This is the light of his face shining upon our hearts. You are accepted has shined in our hearts to give the light. He's shining it in our hearts that we would receive that and then that we would radiate forth that light. Has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. That's a loaded verse. <laughs> to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God. What is the, the light of the knowledge of the glory of God? The knowledge of the glory of God. The Holy Spirit showed me this some time ago. The knowledge of the glory of God that's going to cover the earth as the waters cover the sea is that you are accepted in the beloved. 
This is what brings the glory. When you know you're accepted in the beloved, you live from his river of grace. And then the glory of the Father is revealed from that. For God who commanded light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts. It says, the Holy Spirit poured the love of God into our hearts. You are accepted. The God that commanded light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Not only as you are hid in Christ and you come before the Father in the face of Christ, what you then manifest to this world when you fully apprehend and receive of this acceptance is you project the face of Jesus in this acceptance. that You are accepted in me. For the God that command light to shine out darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. For we have this treasure in earthen vessels. What is this treasure in earthen vessels? It is this river of grace. For we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power, see, this power is his grace that flows into us, through us, because we believe. We believed that we were accepted. For we have this power in earthen vessels that the excellency, we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. Perplexed, but not despaired. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in our body the dying of the Lord Jesus. The crucified life. The old man dying, and my life is in him always bearing about in our body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus may be manifested. His face may shine forth because I know I am accepted in the beloved. For we which live are always delivered unto death, that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our mortal bodies. Now listen, listen, hear this. For we which live are always delivered unto death for, death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus may be manifest in our mortal bodies. So then death worketh in us, this dying of the old man, but a life in you. See, this life that's being projected forth from us, that you are accepted. And then Paul says, For as it is written, I believed, Therefore, I spoke. Paul now is referring to David in Psalm 116, where David was talking about the goodness of the Lord, the acceptance of the Father. I believed. No, where David says, I will walk before the Lord, before his face, in the land of the living, in the light of his face. I believed, therefore I spoke. So here, Paul is quoting this now. So what's the whole context here? It's we have this ministry of righteousness, of walking in this acceptance. As we have received mercy, we faint not to shine forth this light of acceptance. And so here at the end of this, this light shining into darkness, into our hearts to receive of this acceptance, acceptance that we would shine forth this light of Christ's face, that you are accepted. And here at the end of this, Paul says, as it is written, I believed, therefore I spoke. We also believe, 
therefore we speak. We believe we are accepted, therefore we speak. Knowing that he which raised Christ from the dead shall also raise up us together, raise up together with him and shall present with you. What's that talking about? <laughs> it's talking about he shall raise us up, our soul with Christ and say, you are accepted in my eyes. That's what he's talking about. He which raised up Christ from the dead, and he was accepted before the Father, this sacrifice of Christ, that he would raise up us with him and say, you are accepted in my eyes. Turn there real quick, Second Corinthians. Verse 14, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 14, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present with you in this acceptance of the Father. Now listen to the next verse. For all things for your sakes that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound or the word literally means or overflow to the glory of God. See, this is the river of grace flowing from his throne. As Jesus stood up on that great day of the feast, that last day of the feast, the day, the feast of tabernacles and said, if any man thirsteth, let, if, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, who enters into me, into my acceptance, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. This river of grace. 2 Corinthians 4.15 For all things for your sakes, that the abundant grace might, through the thanksgiving of many, overflow to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not, we faint not to believe that I'm accepted. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at those things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal but the things which are not seen, eternal. Now listen to this. This is, this is amazing how this is going to end. For we know that if our earthly, health, our earthly house, this physical body of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. This is the Father's house where you are accepted in the Beloved. The servant does not abide in the house forever. The son abides in the house forever. It's talking about this house, the father's house, where you are accepted. We have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we, we shall not be found naked. We're not naked of him. We're accepted. We're clothed with Christ. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he which hath wrought us for this selfsame thing is God, who has also given us unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. Verse 7, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Listen, we are confident, I say, and willing rather 
to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. See, it's not, oh, I'm an, I got to do works to be accepted. He's talking about we labor, we're diligent to abide in this rest in the acceptance of the Father in his house. Whether present or absent, we are accepted in him. That's only in the Son, the beloved. That we would be diligent to enter into that rest by faith. Lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. The spirit of Antichrist, the whole world lying together unto now. David said, I will walk before the Lord in the land of living. I believed, therefore I spoke. I was greatly afflicted, I said in my haste. All men are liars. The whole world lies. The whole world is coming against me, but I will apprehend this truth. This is what it means to abide in Christ. As John said in 1 John chapter 2, verse 26, abide in him, in this acceptance, that you may have confidence and not be ashamed. When are you ashamed? When you do not believe that you are accepted and not be ashamed before him at his appearing. He who says he abides in him, in this acceptance, ought himself so to walk even as he walks. See, when we fully receive this acceptance and live in it, we will walk as he walks. If we live in this fellowship of the Father's face, in this acceptance, and receive of that love, we will be transformed to walk just as Christ walked. Not out of a works, but out of a being. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which we had from the beginning. The same is the word which we heard from the beginning. What was that word that Jesus said? Love one another. Again, a new commandment I give unto you. What's the new commandment? That's out of John chapter 13, verse 37 or 34, where it says, Jesus said, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you love one another. So the new commandment raises the bar to walk just as Christ walked, the love that he loved, and that giving his life, laying down his life. And the only way we can do that is to walk in the acceptance of the Father where we live from the river of grace. Again, a new commandment I give unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past and the true light now shineth. The darkness of the lie that you are separated, that you are not accepted in the beloved. See, you will walk just as he walked when you truly believe and apprehend this acceptance in the beloved. This is the goodness of the Lord, his acceptance, his face shining upon us. When Moses said, Show me your glory. What did the Father say? I will make all my goodness pass before you. See, what, what precedes the glory? It's us living in this goodness 
of the light of the Father's face. What passed by before Moses, before his glory came, was the light of his face, saying, you are accepted in the beloved. Receive of that light. Walk in that light. And the glory will come forth. I could reveal so much more in regards to that, but I don't want to over... Holy Spirit. Thank you for quickening your word. Thank you for your spirit that we may know the deep things of God. That we may receive the things that have been freely given to us by God. That we are seated in heavenly places. Ah, that our soul may ascend to the same place where we are accepted in you, Jesus. That we are blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. According as you have chosen us in him, in Christ, before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love before you in love, Father, in your goodness. Having predestinated us unto sonship, according to the good pleasure of yourself, Father, according to the good pleasure of your will, unto the praise of the glory of your grace, wherein we are accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, 